This is a short video about roof maintenance and what can happen in the storms and or if your roof's not been laid properly. We'll start at the top with what are called the ridge tiles. These are quite ornate ridge. Um, and you can see that the ridge at the um, on the left hand side have been repointed or are in the process of being repointed. That was a little bit quick. Um, but uh, the roofer was told to stop doing that because repointing isn't what these ridge need because most of them are loose so they need rebedding so the ridges need to come off and need to be bedded down onto the roof again rather than just trying to force uh, mortar up into the gap which you can see at the top there because the gaps between the ridge that moisture gets in there carries some silt and dirt with it that accumulates grows into moss um, and so repointing is just sealing in a whole lot of defects so they need to come off and be rebedded um, these are jobs for roofers I wouldn't suggest that they're DIY jobs unless you feel particularly competent up on roof um, even with a scaffold round knowing that if you do fall you haven't got very far to fall isn't really um, large enough to take the fear factor away um, then we've got the chimney stack itself and as you can see the lead flashing around the chimney these are particularly vulnerable places because the roof moves the roof timbers move the flashing moves and the stack itself moves and the lead flashing is tucked into mortar joints and then mortar is placed over or sealant is placed over that joint keeping it watertight these are very vulnerable areas and these are one of the first to go um, if the roof's very old this is called stepped flashing coming down the side down the parapet wall and as you can see there are several gaps there so a little bit of raking out and repointing probably required there then as we move into one of the other vulnerable areas this is called a valley where two roofs meet at different pitches um, or different planes and this roof valley has been rejointed the uh, the sand and cement underneath the tiles this is a lead valley by the way the lead overlaps the lead's laid from the bottom up and there's an overlap just in the middle and this valley has been repointed because of the recent storm so sand and cement has been forced underneath and built up so that the uh, water can't run underneath the tiles um, that's another vulnerable area in the storms and as you can see at the top of the dormer window where the coming away from the valley the ridge tiles there some of the mortar is also falling out of there so rebedding um, these are actually waterproof um, not so much moss etc has grown underneath as has happened up at the top but uh, that is another vulnerable area um, onto the finial at the end of the ridge and then finally onto the verge tiles um, where the the roofs naturally the roof naturally finishes this is called a verge and you can see that these tiles are also bedded on sand and cement on an asbestolux overhang now these verges are particularly prone to frost and water damage so when they start going the tiles need to be lifted off and rebedded back onto the asbestolux um, these don't need redo redoing at the moment, they're still pretty sound, although there's obviously some flaking. Um, and if you look at our page on the website called Freeze Thaw Action, you'll see that water gets into tiny little cracks. Uh, and in the frost and the cold it expands, enlarges the cracks, more moisture gets in and so on, it bursts the face of the, the verge away. So that's a very brief run through of the vulnerable parts of the roof. The tiles themselves, if they're not laid properly with a proper headlap, see if I can put my finger um, there, you can see that this tile on a plain tile overlaps the one below it and indeed this tile that I have my finger on is overlapped by this one two tiles up. That's called a headlap. So that stops any mortar running through, any water running through the joints. It's different with the larger concrete tiles. The headlap only overlaps the tile below it. Um, and it should be by a minimum of, uh, of 
150 millimeters in a lot of cases but you need to look at the different tiles they need to be set at different gauges for a different headlap so there we are some of the vulnerable parts of a roof um, just in case you want to get up and do it yourself and you'll know what you're dealing with we wouldn't suggest that we would suggest you go to our website and find a good tradesman through Checker Trade.